Hi, my name's Scott Kuhn. You may know me from my short stories or from my debut novel, Lost Helix. In this video, your reader will be stand-up comic Alex Kane. This is Trademark, A Tragedy, written by Scott Kuhn, as read by Alex Kane. Mr. Lebowski Esquire ascends the North Wall, Mr. Fredericks Esquire and Mr. Desmondi Esquire the South. Not an alarm in sight. This will be a cakewalk. As Mr. Lebowski Esquire and Mr. Fredericks Esquire stand guard, Mr. Desmondi Esquire carefully cuts a pane of glass of an unknown brand with his officially issued Diamond Glass trademark brand glass cutter. He lowers a strand of tight knot trademark brand nylon rope, and in short order, all three are in the target building. It's dark. With Minuteman trademark brand night vision goggles on, Mr. Lebowski Esquire heads for the files. Mr. Fredericks Esquire heads for the storefront display. Mr. Desmondi Esquire stops and calls everyone back to the insertion position. Lucian. Beep. They break in three different aisles. Beep. They close in on the target noise. A red beam of light cuts through the darkness. Beep. They stop. They spot the unexpected target. Mr. Desmondi Esquire holds out a bit of paper as if it were a gun. Hold it right there. Kevin continues reading barcodes, filling his stock database. If you're looking to rob a place, you missed it by one door. The check cash in place is next door. We don't even have money for me to steal. Kevin scans another barcode. Beep. This is a hardware store. Beep. Mr. Desmondi Esquire reaches into his double-breasted suit pocket. We're not thieves, he explains as he extracts a business card. We're lawyers. Kevin's eyes swell with fear. The barcode scanner falls to the floor. It's light scanning barcodes on its way down. Beep, beep, beep. Kevin runs for the panic button, but he's too late. A heavy legal document printed on quality paper stops him in his track. Mr. Lebowski Esquire slams on his shoulder with the document. You have been served. Holding the kid at paper point, Mr. Lebowski Esquire demands, Now, show us your glass and glass cutting products. From the roof they hear, What the hell is this? The burglar slides down the still dangling rope. What the hell is this? He points his gun at the three lawyers and the stock boy. I'm doing this breaking. Who the hell are you? Mr. Fredericks Esquire replies, Go about your business, sir. This doesn't concern you. What? I'm pointing a gun at you. I concern you. Yes, and you're lucky. I'm distracted right now. The burglar raises his gun and says snidely, What? You know Kung Fu or something? Mr. Fredericks Esquire turns his attention towards the burglar. No, sir. I know the law. The burglar fires a warning shot. Mr. Desmondi Esquire steps forward. Now you've done it. You clearly don't know who you're firing at. The burglar yells, Shut up and sit down! Now you've done it, says Mr. Fredericks, Esquire. Not only have you broken in clearly without a civil search warrant, you have interrupted a legal proceeding. Diamond Glass, trademark, now has legal grounds to move against you to recoup losses, including the cost of our time here. In essence, every word that comes out of my mouth is costing you, on average, $5.40. I think it's more than fair, explains Mr. Desmondi Esquire, to make that estimate based on syllables, Mr. Fredericks Esquire. After all, syllables are more regular in length than in individual words. Shut up, shut up, shut up, screams the burglar. He grabs Silver Streak trademark brand duct tape and quickly tapes their hands together, one at a time. As the burglar tapes together the hands of Mr. Desmondi Esquire, Mr. Desmondi Esquire says, I am obligated to inform you that you are interrupting a legal investigation by Diamond Glass trademark corporate lawyers into trademark violations by Jake Beagley and Shunt trademark hardware store. Well, I'm here to break through the wall over there and empty the cash from next business over. Mr. Fredericks, Esquire speaks up. You realize taping us with Silver Street trademark brand duct tape is an assault and battery. Mr. Lebowski, Esquire nods. And because Silver Street trademark brand duct tape is extra adhesive, pulling it off amounts to aggravated assault and battery. 
Mr. Desmond Esquire smiles. Very good, Mr. Lebowski Esquire. Mr. Frederick Esquire also smiles and nods. Oh, dear God, did they grow you people in a lab? The burglar pulls back to hit Mr. Frederick's Esquire with his gun. Mr. Frederick Esquire thrusts out his chin defiantly. I would not do that if I were you, warns Mr. Desmondi Esquire. Mr. Frederick Esquire wrote the current law on chival cases resulting from assault, and I mean literally. The burglar stops. You were writing new laws, and now you're breaking into hardware stores in the middle of the night? Why? Mr. Frederick Esquire states simply, that's a pay. The burglar finishes taping them and stands back and looks at his work. That should hold you, lawyers. He shakes his head. Goddamn lawyers. You know what you call 5,000 lawyers chained to the bottom of the sea? Mr. Lebowski Esquire interrupts. A good start. So you heard that one. Mr. Frederick Esquire nods. How about this one? It was so cold last week that I saw several lawyers with their hands in their own pockets. Mr. Le Desmondi Esquire chuckles. Or this one. How was copper wire invented? Two lawyers were arguing over a penny. <laughs> Mr. Lebowski Esquire tearfully interrupts the jocularity. Everyone hates lawyers, but when you want to sue someone, who do you turn to? When you want a will or a contract or any other legal document too complex for the Kisssoft household lawyer trademark brand legal document software, who do you turn to? Only because people like you make the law so complex. And why do we make the law so complex? Because criminals like you look for every crack, every loophole, every edge to skirt around the law. And we have spackle, trademark, spackle, trademark, spackle, trademark. What the hell are you talking about? I broke in. I have a gun. I'm here to steal stuff. What's complicated about that? Not you, Mr. Lebowski Esquire roars. Him! Mr. Lebowski Esquire thrusts his shaking duct tape hands towards the stock boy. Yes, you, Mr. Putting Steely Glass Trademark products in a display container, clearly provided for and by Diamond Glass Trademark products. You know kerosene was once a trademark product, but for people, I mean criminals like you. Kevin looks to the burglar. Dude, get me out of here. These guys are nuts. Mr. Lebowski Esquire huffs. Nutch! My father! My father! Mr. Lebowski Esquire breaks down to tears. Mr. Fredericks Esquire explains. His father had a company and a corporation was able to steal the product and the product name right out from under him. Mr. Lebowski Esquire wrote a ballad about it. Recite the ballad for us, Mr. Lebowski Esquire. Mr. Lebowski Esquire tearfully recited, This is a ballad of a noble man who knew not the Lamin Act. This man would lose his only trademark, and he would not get it back. Just shut up, says the burglar, exacerbatedly. Please, just shut up. Wait, insists Mr. Dismondi Esquire. I have a backstory too. See, I am a diamond glass trademark man, as was my father before me, and his father before him, and his father before him, and, um, I think that's about as far back as it goes. Shut up! Shut up! The burglar grabs his own head as if trying to hold it together. Damn! It's almost done. I don't have time to bite down the wall. You lawyers cost me this job. Now I have to get out of here with nothing. The burglar starts to leave. Mr. Fredericks Esquire calls out, To save us some pain and to save you one more line item in the pending lawsuit from Diamond Glass Trademark Glass Manufacturers, I strongly recommend that you use Earthhugger Trademark Brand Commercial Solvent to remove the Silver Street Trademark Brand Duct Tape from our wrists before you leave. The fact that Mr. Fredericks Esquire has mentioned this fact, explains Mr. Lebowski Esquire, adds weight to your negligence should you leave without providing us with Earthhugger trademark brand commercial solvent. Mr. Desmondi Esquire chimes in, Yes, and there is an Earthhugger trademark brand commercial solvent display right next to you, which is properly marked and stocked, unlike the glass 
and glass cutting products display, your negligence at this point would be most profound. Weak and confused, the burglar tosses them the solvent. Mr. Fredericks nods, bemused. Oh, I would consider that an act in good faith. You may have saved yourself a lot of money. The burglar turns to Kevin. Kid, I would rescue you from these nuts, but I don't have the time. The burglar turns to leave. For the love of- cries Crab Kevin. At least shoot me! Mr. Lebowski Esquire asks Mr. Frederick Esquire. Would that be considered slander, calling a schnutch? The burglar screams and runs out the front door and into a police officer writing a ticket on the burglar's car. As the officer's backup arrives to help apprehend the burglar, the lawyers and the stock boy free themselves with the solvent. Mr. Frederick's Esquire heads out to deal with the police. Mr. Desmondi turns to Kevin. Now, back to the business at hand. After a short negotiation, they come to an agreement, which releases Kevin from liability, but leaves the store open to legal repercussions if the violation is not corrected in seven days. After signing the agreement, Kevin asks, Can I get a Xerox of that? Mr. Lebowski breaks down in tears. Have you learned nothing? Mr. Desmondi Esquire holds his distraught colleague close, comforting him. Over the shoulder of Mr. Lebowski Esquire, he scolds Kevin. Dutch photocopy of a Xerox trademark photocopy machine. Thank you. He holds Mr. Lebowski closer. One day they will learn. And that concludes Trademark, a Tragedy. For links to this and my other short stories, go to my published works page at scottcoonsci-fi.com. Also, check out lostfelix.com to learn more about my debut novel, Lost Helix. Thank you. And please remember to like and subscribe.